I think maybe I will take a few minutes just to say uh, something that I find repulsive about especially monotheistic messianic religion. Um, in, it, with a large part of itself, it quite clearly do, wants us all to die. It wants this world to come to an end. You can tell the yearning for things to be over. When you look at the Israeli settlers, uh, paid for often by American tax dollars, deciding that if they can steal enough land from other people and get all the Jews into the promised land and all the non-Jews out of it, then finally the Jewish people will be worthy of the return of the Messiah. And there are Christians in this country who consider it their job to help this happen so that Armageddon can occur. So the painful business of living as humans and studying civilization and trying to acquire learning and knowledge and health and medicine and to push back can all be scrapped and, and the, the cult of death can take over. There are prophetic activities in the Bible that have now come true as, as history has passed. So given all of that background, there's no reason to think that what, what the Bible further predicts to be true, which is the second coming, the rapture, and Armageddon, uh, won't also ultimately come true. On the garbage heap of history, you have the nations that turned against Israel. Hittites are gone, the Phoenicians are gone, the Assyrians are gone, the Babylonians are gone, but the Jews survive. They are an ancient people that can trace their lineage all the way back to Abraham in approximately 2000 BC. Nobody else can do that. So that's, that's the danger, is that God is still saying, they are the apple of my eye. Uh, I have put my blessing upon them, and those who bless them will be blessed, and those who curse them I will judge. Thousands gathered here in Washington to show their support for the nation of Israel. God says, I will bless those who bless Israel. That's right. And personally, I would, I would like to be a part of that. Thank you very much. Whenever <laughs> we kind of stiff Israel, something bad happens here. We, we pushed people out of Gaza and so forth, and then we had Katrina over here, where people were pushed into different states because of a storm. And people see almost a parallel between rough treatment to Israel uh, and judgment happening to America. I don't care how much uh, the Iranians uh, get their bomb together to annihilate Israel. It will fizzle. It will fizzle. It will, it will not work. Because in the 67-year war, there were time and time again that they, they would look up and they would see bombs just e boom in the air and there was this invisible bubble over Israel because God's going to protect his people. Who is the Antichrist? One of the things is that he will be charismatic but he will also be a man of peace and so he'll be, he will be one who has promoted peace for many years. Well, there's going to be a peace treaty but that's a false peace and eventually like, then when the Lord comes back that'll take care of it. The one who forces Israel into a peace treaty with the Arabs. But another reason why we support Israel, we have a common enemy. It's, who is that? Muslim. The Quran is a false, it's, it's absolutely not the word of God. I was a former, I was a member of the mainline church, and I'm no different than a Muslim. So we're fighting what is behind the Muslim people, which is Satan. Because Satan is the one who's actually trying to destroy the Jewish race. Because that way he would destroy God's plan. And what will happen is, Israel and the Western world in order to save our type of civilization, have got to fight the Muslim. And if we don't take out Iran, one way or another, uh, it's it's um, if we move out of Iraq, the Muslims are going to take over and they're going to follow us here. So I'm going to compare the Antichrist from the Holy Bible with the Al Mahdi, or who they think is their savior, from the Quran. Okay, first of all. The Antichrist will be the head of a one-world government. It's spelled out in Revelation. Okay, the Almighty will be the head of a one-world government. Okay, the Antichrist leads a one-world religion. The Almighty sets up Islam as a one-world religion. The Antichrist confirms a covenant, a seven-year treaty between the Jews and the Gentile world. Gentile world. Uh, the Almighty upholds a seven-year treaty between the Jews and the Gentile world. 
the Antichrist rules for approximately seven years. The Almighty rules for approximately seven years. The Antichrist is described in the Bible as the white horseman of the apocalypse. The Almighty, the same biblical passage of the Antichrist as the white rider, is used by Muslim scholars as evidence of the Mahdi in the Christian Bible. So they point to this description of the Antichrist in our Bible and say, there's our Almighty. Wow. Antichrist targets and persecutes Christians and Jews who do not convert. The Almighty focuses his conversion efforts on Jews and Christians and kills those who do not convert. The Antichrist changes the laws in the calendar. The Almighty implements Sharia law and use of the Islamic calendar. The Antichrist is granted supernatural powers from Satan to perform signs and wonders. The Almighty is granted supernatural powers from Allah to perform signs and wonders. Hmm. Hmm. The Antichrist arrives on the scene during a period of great turmoil caused by war, crime, natural disasters, and religious apostasy. The Almighty arrives on the scene during a period of great turmoil caused by war, crime, natural disasters, and religious apostasy. So, I present to you that the Muslim Almighty will be the Antichrist spoken of in the Bible. They're one and the same. They think he's going to be the savior of the world. We know he's the Antichrist. We're the world's richest country. We're the world's most technologically advanced country. You'd think that our students would understand science uh, at the highest level in the world. In fact, in tests of scientific understanding, other countries regularly beat the pants off us. It means that instead of perfecting our science curriculum so that we have kids who are more scientifically literate, the curriculum is going to be designed by politicians who want to insert Bible stories instead of the best possible science. Well, it's certainly true that among uh, industrialized modern societies, the two countries that are lowest on the scale of accepting evolution are the United States and Turkey.